Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to It's Poppin' where we talk about everything pop-up camper related. So in this video, we're gonna talk about cold weather pop-up camping. Now, the funny thing about this video is we clearly booked a camping trip for early mid-November thinking it'd be at least somewhat cold here but it ended up being like high of 70 and low of 50 at night. So as you can see, I'm in a t-shirt. It is not cold at all, but we'll just pretend it's cold. So, burr. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna kind of break this down into three sections with regards to cold weather pop-up camping. First one are gonna be some pop-up camper mods that you might wanna consider doing for your pop-up camper. And I think the majority of them we've actually covered in other videos. And the second thing are gonna be, of course, things or items to bring when you're looking to do some cold weather camping that'll make it of course a much more enjoyable experience and then the third part of this video is going to be just some considerations some things you might want to take into consideration when you're going uh, pop-up camping in cold weather all right so the first thing on my list for pop-up camper modifications are going to be those reflectic reflectix inserts that you can make out of the reflectix material now we have a complete video on how to essentially make those step by step so if you want to check that out please do but essentially those work for both hot and cold weather camping because they just provide a little bit of insulation to your your bunk ends essentially the second one we also covered in that same video and that's going to be those either survival blankets and or the pop-up gizmos that have the reflective side on them now what you can do for cold weather is essentially just flip those over to the dark side. For example, on our pop-up, they're green. Um, and then that way, the reflective materials on the inside, once again, providing a little bit of uh, heat retention for your bunk ends. Now, the other cool thing about those is, and, and, and the reflective inserts as well, is that they provide a little bit more shade or they block a little bit more of the sun in the morning. So it stays a little bit darker in your pop-up if you wanna sleep in a little longer which I definitely do most days. <laughs> and the third modification you can do, which we've kind of touched on in videos, but we've never directly talked about, are the foam tiles that you would traditionally put on as flooring in like a workout room or a playroom or something like that. But we put the foam tiles inside of the bed area and we put those under our mattress and that way it's just an, I don't know, added half inch maybe of insulation under that bed to provide, like I said, a little bit more insulation. Now, we also put those under the dog crates on the other bunk end and that provides not only a little bit of insulation under them, but it also protects the uh, plywood from getting scratched up and banged up by the um, dog crates that we have on the other end. All right, so welcome inside the pop-up. As far as items to bring when you're cold weather pop-up camping, number one on our list is an electric space heater. Now, this is one that's actually kind of nice because it has some temperatures on it that you can set it to, and then once it reads that temperature, it'll shut off. So, for example, last night, I think we had it at like 65 or 70 degrees and that way it wasn't just continuously blasting warm air into here and it maintained a really nice temperature so going along with that electric space heater if you're going to be bringing one i highly recommend bringing a 15 amp extension cord that you can run directly from your electrical hookup box to your space heater now what that does is it essentially bypasses you know running your space heater off your electric inside your pop-up and that way then if you want to run a coffee maker or you know an electric griddle or something else that's electricity intensive you don't run the risk of you know flipping a, a circuit breaker on your uh, converter if you're going to be boondocking or if you're going to be camping somewhere that doesn't have an electrical hookup what can you do well of course most pop-up campers including ours have of course a propane heater but from my understanding and take it for what it's worth because we don't use it horribly often but that can be pretty propane intensive and you're going to need some way to power the fan whether that's battery power or um, well that's about it you, you have to be hooked up to a battery if you're not hooked up to shore power so that can take a draw on your battery as well so an alternative to the internal uh, propane heater in your pop-up camper 
would be some sort of portable propane heater, perhaps one that uses the small one pound propane cylinders. But of course, with those, you're gonna wanna you know, be careful and make sure you follow the directions as far as our use, as far as venting and things of that nature so you're safe when you're running those propane heaters inside your camper. And of course, if you do choose to run propane heaters, whether that's your internal pop-up camper heater or um, a standalone heater, make sure you bring extra propane for those just so you don't run out. So next up on our list of items to bring would be, and we actually don't have these, but it's something that you can consider bringing if you do or perhaps if your um, pop-up camper came with them, but that would be a heated mattress or a heated mattress pad. I know a lot of the newer pop-up campers do come with a heated mattress and that's awesome. We don't have anything like that. So if you do have them, uh, let us know how they work. Are they you know, worth it or do you recommend them? Kind of going along with a heated mattress pad are heated blankets. I think those would be a, a great alternative to a heated mattress pad if you don't have that option. But once again, both of those options would require you to be hooked up to shore power beyond those items to kind of heat up your pop-up camper or keep you warm of course you can go back to the old standby of just bringing extra blankets so we definitely make sure we have a lot of extra blankets along when we're cold weather camping and going along with blankets uh, make sure you bring the appropriate clothing whether that's some like inside sleeping clothing for cold weather you know sweatshirt and sweatpants and also, of course, clothing for when you're outside and by the fire or going on hikes or whatever. All right, next up, make sure you bring lots of extra firewood. That way you can get a decent sized fire going when you're outside and wanting to get warm. But uh, kind of going along with that, make sure you don't get too close to the fire like we did here uh, with your blanket, otherwise it might uh, singe them a little bit. Here's the final three items on our list to bring. And they're items that you might not really think about, but they're definitely nice to have. So first on, on uh, that list would be a small sho snow shovel. Now this one actually collapses down and then it folds up. And we actually keep this in our car year round, but um, of course it's good for kind of vehicle preparedness in case you ever get stuck in the snow. But this is really handy for if, it, if you have snow on the ground and you're going camping clearing out some spots, clearing out your fire pit, clearing off your picnic table if there is one, stuff like that where you wanna get the snow off so that way you can use it. But uh, this is actually a super handy one that we kind of just discovered last year. Another really handy item to bring that you might not think about would be an RV mat for cold weather camping. Now the good thing about that is then of course you kind of have a spot that you can either cover up snow or cover up wet leaves or things like that. Kind of have a dry spot for setting up camp and especially if you're pop-up camping with dogs, it gives them a spot to lay that's not directly in the snow. They're not getting wet, they're not getting muddy, things like that. So definitely uh, bring your RV mat, which I'm sure you're bringing for camping all year round, but it's a great thing to have for winter camping as well. And the final thing you can bring for cold weather pop-up camping that will make your time a little bit nicer would be some sort of carpeting or maybe a, some sort of rug or runner that you can put inside your pop-up camper. That way, if you're walking around without shoes or whatnot, it's a little bit warmer. Once again, kind of adds that insulative effect. We actually keep a runner in our camper year round. It helps from, from the dogs from tracking in a lot of leaves and dirt and stuff. Keeps it a little bit nicer for them and then they're not um, slipping around on the kind of slicker final plank flooring. So we leave a runner in here all year round, but it definitely also helps for the cold weather. So that's all the things or items that we recommend that you bring cold weather pop-up camping. Now, to go along with your items and the modifications that you might wanna to do to your pop-up camper, there's a few considerations that we think you should take into account when you're going cold weather camping. Now, the first big one, and we just did a video on this, and that's how to winterize your pop-up camper water system. If you're gonna be going camping and maybe the lows are getting below that freezing point, I would definitely winterize your water system that way you don't have to worry about any of your components of your water system your water pump any of your pipes things of that nature bursting breaking which would of course not be fun now the second consideration i want you guys to think about is condensation of course if you have a nice warm pop-up and then it's quite cold on the outside that's something that's going to create some condensation just by existing in your pop-up breathing things of that nature if you're doing any cooking inside that's going to produce condensation and then of course if you have any of those propane heaters running those also produce condensation so something to think about and obviously the way to mitigate that is maybe if you have a roof fan running that 
or just cracking a window. I know it seems counterintuitive, but you don't want that condensation inside. It's better to open up a, a window or a vent or something of that nature, let a little bit of cold air in, but reduce that condensation. Now, the third consideration is lighting. Now, with daylight savings time just passing, uh, falling back essentially, we definitely lost a lot of that daylight we did have. And if you're not um, able to get out and set up camp by, you know, 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock, it's already dark by then. So definitely bring possibly even more lighting than you had previously brought, whether, you know, that's lanterns or rope lights or, you know, doing like that light strip mod that we did in one of our previous videos. Just be prepared, of course, to set up in the dark and for it to get dark early. So is there anything you guys either have done to modify your camper specifically for cold weather camping? Are there any items that you guys bring that we forgot or that we could include on our list? And finally, um, is there anything that we you know missed as far as some considerations for pop-up camping? Definitely let us know in the comments below. We, we would uh, definitely appreciate, you know, making uh, our winter camping set up a little bit better. And finally, if you guys found some value in the video or any of the pop-up camper videos that do, we do, definitely consider subscribing. But otherwise, that's it. Just uh, a few modifications for you, a few items to bring and some considerations as far as cold weather camping. And uh, we hope you stay warm out there, even uh, though it already is warm here. <laughs> But uh, I'm sure it'll cool off quick enough and we'll get some actual uh, cold weather pop-up camping in. So with that being said, uh, hopefully you see in the next one. If not, hopefully you see out there camping.